Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet. Welcome back to another StarCraft 2 Daily Masters. And I thought that was a Reaper for some reason, but the Reaper is still coming out. So, yeah, that's just an SCV. So, anyway, let's go ahead and have a look at this game. It is going to be Mr. Todd up the top right side of the map. He is 29 years of age from France. Plays for XMG, the team XMG. I wonder what they stand for. Let's go and alt tab and see what they stand for. And yeah, what does stupid mouse? All right, XMG is a gaming laptop brand. I'm not sure it stands for uh, anything. It probably stands for something. It probably stands for something in German, so it's not going to make any sense to me anyway. So let's go ahead and check out the other player down the bottom left side of the map. It is Mr. Bunny. He is 22 years of age from Denmark, plays for Team Liquid. And I see a lot of players with the HyperX that belong to Team Liquid, so... Um, I don't know, maybe HyperX is what the uh, Team Liquid is using as their clan. Which is interesting, because you think it would be like TL or Liquid or something like that. Um, regardless, he's called Liquid Bunny anyway, so everybody knows he's from Team Liquid. And maybe they all have that on their name, so they're just like, yep, whatever. It's it's all good, let's just go HyperX instead, because HyperX is such an awesome word to have. So, let's go ahead. The Reaper manages to get up, manages to see all of the workers, manages to see that there is no crazy tech going on. So, great, great scout there by Mr. Bunny. As soon as it dies, two more gateways going down. So that brings up to a three gate. Nothing too serious though. If we start seeing any sort of tech or any sort of crazy amount of gateways, then he's going to have to start getting worried. But we'll just have to see how it goes. So both players got the expansion down. Looks like Todd, as expected, is pushing out a little bit harder with the worker numbers. But you always expect that from the Protoss because of course they chrono boost the living hell out of every single Nexus. Or Nexi, I don't know what I should be calling it. I'm so lost on the bloody Protoss, bloody plurals and stuff like that. We got Colossus, we got Nexus, we've probably got something else which I screw up. But those guys, I don't know, I started using the plural and then I started using the plural even when I didn't need to. And I'm still doing it. So, I don't know, Nexi sounds pretty cool though. So I'm just going to keep doing it. And hopefully none of you guys care too much about grammar. You're just interested in the gameplay. Oh, this Marine. Look at this guy. He's so awesome. He's, well, he's not quite awesome to take out that pylon. But he's going to go in and the Stalker's just like, Yep, I am way bigger than you. I am going to own you. Look at this Stalker, man. If that Marine's like, that Marine's going to be like two and a half meters tall in that suit. That means this Stalker is like four Maybe, yeah, I'd say about four meters tall. And this thing's about four meters tall. Um, and this thing's like 10 meters tall. That's crazy shit, man. That really, really is crazy. And even this guy's like a meter and a half off the ground or something like that from his, from the ground to the very tip. So that, those probes are not tiny, man. They are freaking huge. They're like the size of a cow or something like that. That's how, these probes are the size of cows in real life. There actually are cow critters, but I don't see any of them in here. Um, I don't know, there's some birdies. Wee birdies, look at him flying around. I wonder why they don't land anywhere, they just fly everywhere. I mean, would you get tired? This is going to be a long game, the birds need to fly. Why can't I select the bird and go follow mode? I want to go follow mode on these stupid things. Ah, uh, there's birdie, 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 birdie. Come on, birdie. Are you going to land, or are you just going to completely disregard the laws of physics? and bird nature and all that sort of stuff. Nah, they're just going to keep flying around. They're not going up or down either, they're just going sideways. It's like beautiful lift control. They're not going up, they're not going down. Usually if you're a bird, you're sort of going up and down all the time because you've got the wing. They're not flying in any directions either. They're just go. Look at these, I think there's a pattern here. I think they're flying around the same area. They're not even moving on. Oh my god. And here bunch, comes a bunch of marines as well. Oh, those guys are going to own. I think we can see the birds even when they're uh, in the shadow. That's incredible. There's so many things you can learn about this game just by watching the birds. Just by watching the critters, man. It's incredible. So what do we got here? First Colossus coming out. That's going to be a while. The Marines coming in. Going to snipe some workers nice and fast. Very, very cool. If we had a third base coming, it did get cancelled, obviously. I'm not sure if it was coming out at the first place, but... Oh, that Marine just got owned. We've got the first Colossi coming out. 
Todd has got a bunch of ground units as well. Should be enough to deal with these guys. Not too many Marauders. In fact, only one in that army. So, yeah, Bunny can't really push through and do a lot. If he had a ton of um, Marauders, he could snipe down all the Stalkers and probably snipe the Colossus as well. But you really need a decent amount of Marauders to pull that off. Marines just do not get it done. And they get killed so easily by the Colossus. So, yeah, that's it. Done, 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 done. And... So many, he cancelled, I thought he had another Colossus coming, but I think he cancelled that. And, oh, the Marine. You silly, silly, silly bastard. Oh, look at that. Somehow he ends up flying like four metres, but the blood stays there. you think there'd be blood splash, just splashing everywhere if he was flying that far, but no, he just sort of drops all his blood and then he flies off. It's another perversion of physics. There are just way too many in this game. And look at these birds, man. They're still just flying around the same area, almost like they're on a fixed path, almost like they're never allowed to deviate from that path. They're just, I mean, there's, they're not flying anywhere. They're just flying around in the same circle. This little bird, that little bird, they're not deviating at all. This is, this is just, it's just not natural, okay? It's, there's something deeply wrong with this game that they would make the birds fly in that particular pattern over and over and over again. It's like they're trying to replicate real bird behavior, but they couldn't be bothered to actually give the bird some sort of AI. They just said, look, here's, a, here's an invisible railway track. Just, you know, run along that for freaking ever. Oh, look, there's some more birds. There's two birds. It looks like the same birds, except are they... They're in a different position, man. They're like the brothers of these other birds, but never the twain shall meet, because Blizzard made it like that. Unfortunate. We've got a ton more Marauders here. We've got a couple of Vikings. More Vikings coming out. Bunny with a ton of Starports pushing out the Vikings. I very, very much like that play. What do we got for upgrades? We've got one with one armor nearly about to finish. We've got one armor for Mr. Todd. Level 2 armor just about to come out. It's going to help his Zealots quite a lot, and he does have a lot of Zealots out on the map so he's in a pretty good position as far as his upgrades as far as his units is concerned but he's still behind he's behind three workers his army size is 20 behind the macro cannon is going into effect for mr bunny i know they both have three bases and they both have a similar amount of workers but i think that uh bunny just had this third base longer and he probably moved it over probably had it mining out workers or something like that a lot quicker so the storm coming down, not really doing a lot. The Vikings still look pretty healthy. They're chasing after this Colossi. They snipe the Mothership Core. Now they're in the damaging position. Oh, Worker's coming out for Bunny, man. He wants to end it. He absolutely wants to end it. He wants this to be the end of the game right here. And I think he is going to get his wish. I do not know how Todd can stand up to all this. The Vikings are on the ground. The Workers are on the ground. Everything is attacking everything. A beautiful storm on a lot of these guys. A couple more storms like that and maybe this force is going to be in trouble, but there's so many Marauders, and right now the Marauders are not taking a lot of the damage. It's like the uh, Marines and the workers and all that sort of crazy crap going on. But Todd somehow has still managed to build a whole lot of stuff. How many workers did he lose there? Um, not actually that much. It's freaking Bunny, which is losing the workers. The Zealots going nuts. Bunch of guys going nuts here. Bunny down to 26 workers. Todd up to 50, so keeping your workers alive. Uh, what am I talking about? He sent most of his workers out here with the main force. Ouch. That's why he's down so many workers, because he bloody sent them out of the army. I assume it was not a mistake, but at this point, you can never be sure of anything. And Todd, somehow, he's running off one base, but you best believe that he is fully mining it at the moment. His income still enough to keep him going, and Bunny... I mean, Todd has lost his bases, Bunny has lost his workers... They're both pretty screwed in the macro department, but the important thing is, Todd managed to hold off that attack. I don't know how he did it, but he managed to hold it off, and he's got a very decent sized army there. And Bunny, duh, it's, all it's going to take is this base to finish, and then Bunny is in a lot of trouble. So he may be regretting that move to send all the workers out. It was a calculated risk, and maybe uh, he was calculating using the wrong hand or something like that because it didn't work out at all, and now he is pretty screwed. I don't know. I thought Todd was going to go down there. I thought I saw so many units, but some great storms helped a lot. A lot. I think if storms weren't there, 
then Bunny would have just overwhelmed everything. But the Storms came down over and over again. Really knocked down a lot of units. Killed quite a lot of units. I think most of the workers went down because of Storms. And that's it. It just really sucks. So Todd has this base up again. He's got a lot of mining going on. But Bunny pushing hard on the worker numbers. Three at a time. And he's going to be in a fair position fairly soon. So he's not out of the running yet. I gotta say, he's still in a fair position. And maybe we've just seen some really queer sort of reset at this point. Like one player loses 30 workers, the other player loses two bases, and you kinda just reset. Maybe, I don't know. 44 under 51, so Todd's still a little bit behead, but he may not fully realize it. Look at how much mules he's got, man. He's only got two. Um, I guess these guys just waiting on the third base to get up. They're long distance mining now, so that's gonna suck. Nice attack of Zealots coming in from one side. Main army from the other side. Are we gonna see some damage? Oh, Zealots getting warped in over here. Ouchie mc, ouchie mc, ouch. Is Bunny gonna be able to deal with this? Scares away the main force. He's slowly dealing with the force in his main base. The Zealots managed to get over to the third base, but a supply depot slash bunker does slow them down a little bit. And the rest of the forces do manage to take them off. So, pretty good job by Bunny there. A little bit of luck. Those Zealots could have done a ton more damage if it wasn't for going for this bunker first. Which is very nice. These guys did a fair bit of damage, but he's still okay. Did lose a decent amount of workers. But, he's still okay. I think that Bunny is still okay. He's just going to pump those workers up again. Todd is not in a massively awesome position. Here. His army is down. His workers are not too much better than Bunny's. So, that was more of a let's try and even things out, which kind of worked. But, and so now he's sort of evened out. Sort of, kind of, maybe, I don't know. The workers are in his favour, the army is not. So he needs time. Todd needs time to even this out. He's going to try and go over here. we got some nice potential for storms. We do have High Templars, though. High Templars cloaking out. Are they going to see it? Beautiful, beautiful. On the High Templars, are we going to get this other High Templar going? These High Templars looking good. They're going to try and storm some stuff. Let's see how they go. There's another High Templar right in the middle, just going nuts here. So we got some High Templar. Zealots, Zealots, more Zealots. It is Zealot craziness going on at the moment. How the freaking hell did Todd get Zealots attacking all three of these bases while he's defending this force, man? The guy is a freaking magician. I do not know how the hell Todd did that. If Todd wins, man, we're going to have to go back. If Todd loses, we're going to have to go back and look at that. Because I got no idea how the hell he had Zealots in all three bases. He's being attacked and suddenly I'm like, what the hell? Three bases. Zealots in all of them. You crazy bastard. But somehow he did it. We're going to have to look. We're going to go back. We're going to have to look at it. Because I need to know at this point. I need to know that Todd is not some sort of crazy witch doctor, that he's not hacking the game or anything stupid like that, because right now it really does seem like magic to me, but he keeps on going. He keeps on going. 15 workers left over. Alright, so the Warp Prism obviously dropped him off here. These guys, where did they come from? There's no pylon within like 100 miles of this base. So maybe they all warped in from the War Prism. We're going to go back and we're going to watch it. We're going to go back to the replay early on. All oh, those Marauders, man. They're going hard for the Colossi. I'm not quite able to take out the last one, but they're able to take it a lot. Archons and Immortals are going to be trying to finish everything off here. Looking pretty good at this point. The army size, not favoring Bunny anymore. It's starting to go down in a serious way. Archons and Colossus and Immortals. Oh my. And... Things are just not looking good. There's one more Zealot left. Bunny gives the GG. All right. Let's go back and check out this craziness right here. Because Zealots... All right. All right. So, let's go back to about this point. Todd's still over here. No, no, that's... Oh, that's too far back, is it? I don't know what the hell's going back here. All right, so... Alright, so we pause it here. Let's slow it down a little bit. Alright, so what we got here? Todd moved out a little bit. He's sort of having a look around. He's sort of like, alright, there's a freaking huge army coming my way. Somehow he's seen it, I don't know, but he's backing off. So, what have we got down here? We've got four zealots, 
they ran the long way. They took the long path. We've got Todd opens the warp prism, warps in three uh, zealots there. He's got four more inside the warp prism. Okay, let's go, let's go. Um, pause it, running on normal speed. Warp prism goes down, three zealots there, four zealots there. Main army coming back here, main army going in there. Bunny has no freaking idea how many zealots are about to hit his base. At the same time, main army moving over to hit the third base. Warp Prism goes to the main. Three zealots come across. They're going to go for the natural. These guys going for the third base. Start attacking the bunker. Warp Prism drops off the zealots. Is it going to warp in more? Not sure. May want to save the warps for the reinforcements. The main army of Bunny just starting to go in. And it looks like we're going to get some sort of flank here. Just trying to push them off. Three zealots stopped a little bit. Obviously not enough micro to move them. They are moving in now. These guys continuing to hit. Some nice repairs from Bunny keeping on top of that. Those zealots having a bad time. These zealots going carte blanche, but I think they killed whatever workers were there. That was nice. These zealots going carte blanche. Nobody even looking at them. These guys just reinforcement. Not enough micro to take care of these zealots. These guys, the bunker, it's almost down, but the workers doing such a great job. However, now it is fully repaired, and it's going to go start going down from here because you need more micro to start re-repairing it. And I don't know that Bunny is going to be able to save that much micro. Maybe here's it looks like the Zealot is going to go down regardless. Zealots finish up off everything there. There's nothing left. Zealots over here. Their Marauders are starting to take some off, so Bunny's obviously pulled some Marauders off the reinforcements. Going to take them off, scaring this force away. And they're sort of just jumping around a bit. We're going to see some storms coming down soon. That will be freaking sweet. Me all these zealots pretty much finished everything off. These guys almost died, but got lifted up. These guys knocked them away. And now they're just sitting there doing nothing because there's no micro to move them. And yeah, this is it. The bunker did manage to survive. But let's see it. Have a look. 15 workers left over. That's it. So Todd, all this craziness going on at the same time. And Bunny falls back with a half decent amount of units in his active forces, a half decent amount of army only to realize that he has lost almost any every worker that he cared about. The Zealots from the expansion going over here, they're gonna be taking over this base. Bunny is like, what the friggin' hell do I do now? Because these Zealots are going nuts. They look, I think these are the ones that eventually took the bunker out. This is just gonna sit there, do nothing, whatever. He's gonna repair this orbital before it goes down. Is he? He's not microing the mule. Ah, oh, it's probably too late anyway. He microed it down, but the, he's got so much he needs to do at this point. Bunny's just got so much. He's concentrating on taking out the Colossi. Not a bad thing to concentrate on, so the Commander does go down. The Zealots are all dead there, so meh, whatever. And, yeah, main army is starting to slow down quite a bit. This is, this is pretty much over at this point, but... Yeah, those Zealots... The... That was some of the most beautiful synchronization I've ever seen from Todd. Managed to sneak three or four zealots into each base, did it beautifully, and got what he needed to do. I mean, the main base got wiped out, the expansion got wiped out, the third base, thanks to the bunker, most of the workers did survive, but still, it was quite a lot of pressure and some workers probably died here. And meanwhile, Todd managed to hold off against the main army. Did lose his nexus, but whatever, small price to pay. And that's it. Bunny gave the GG. So exceptionally, exceptionally good finish to the game by Mr. Todd. And a very, very well-deserved victory there. So that is it. Thank you very much for watching. I don't know if I actually introduced these players. I got the, I think I forgot to introduce them. Um, or did I? No, I did, because I remember he was from XMG and Bunny was from Team Liquid. So I didn't introduce him. All right. Done. Game done. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will catch you guys tomorrow with another one. Stay tuned.